Section 1-3 is on distance and midpoints. And so today we're going to be dealing with two different formulas. The distance formula and the midpoint formula will be on your flipper, which we'll talk about in class on how to create that. <clears throat> your first one is the distance formula. So basically, these formulas are here to help you figure out how to find the distance between um, two points. It's very easy to find it on a number line because all you need to do is count. So basically, in order to find the distance between P and G, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5. Okay. Coordinate plane, it's a little bit more difficult because we're dealing with coordinates. Okay. X and Y, X and Y. So let's say, for instance, that we have one point, X, y, X1, Y1, and then we have another point with a different X and Y, so we call it X2, Y2. So there's no, really no, the, the, the under 1 doesn't mean you do anything to the X, it just means that these X and Y is different from this X and Y. And what I need to do, and I don't, it doesn't matter which point really is X1, Y1, I can switch this to X2, Y2 as long as I, we establish that they're different. Okay, so on this one, the formula that we fill in to find the distance, so that means the measurement between this and this, so that line, okay, is I take x2 minus x1, so this one minus this, and I square it, okay, and then the next one is y2 minus 1, subtract it, and then I square, I add them together, and I square root. It's very important that if you decide to put the whole thing in your calculator that you put all the parentheses. I suggest to make sure that you got the answer right, that you go ahead and do them separately and then square root them at the end. Again, if you haven't done so, please make sure to do your vocabulary or go ahead and copy this down after I talk or before I talk. <clears throat> the next one we're dealing with our last formula is the midpoint formula. Midpoint and say is in your vocabulary, same thing with um, bisector. Basically, it means it cuts it in half. Okay, so here this is the midpoint, uh, which means it cuts a segment into two equal parts. So that means if I were to take this and I were to cut it, it the two pieces, if I measured it, should be equal if I, if I broke it exactly at its midpoint. So this, in, in this case, um, a line that is cut is also called a bisector, okay? So here is P, M, Q, and basically in a number line, it's a little bit more simple than a coordinate plane. So for a number line, all I need to do is find the number of P, which let's say it's A, and the number of Q, let's say it's B. So I take those two, add it, and then just divide it. So basically, if this was maybe six inches, I would take that, Cut, um, take 6 and then divide by 2, right? Because I'd add them together. 6 divided by 2. <clears throat> so here, I would do the coordinate plane. Now the coordinate plane is basically x1, y1, and x2, y2. And again, just like the distance formula, these just represent different numbers. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little different. The distance formula has one number. And for this midpoint, this is only one number. But for a coordinate plane midpoint, so that means if you're trying to find a midpoint between two points, I'm going to have two numbers, an x value and a y value. But it's pretty similar to how I find this. I just take the two numbers, the two x's, I add them together and divide it by two. That gives me my new x. Okay? And then I take the two y's, and again, with addition, it doesn't matter which way. So I take the two y's, I add them together, and I go ahead and divide that by two. So I have x, y. So the midpoint of a coordinate plane is not one answer, but I have an x value and a y value, and that becomes the midpoint. What that means is that this is going to tell me where to put my point to make sure that this side is equal to this side. Remember when we say that it's equal, we go ahead and put that line. So it tells me where to find this coordinate. In order for me to find it on a coordinate plane, I need an x value and a y value. So make sure to go ahead and write this down, and we're going to get into examples. Example number one is <clears throat> asking us to find the distance between e, negative 4, and a uh, negative 4, comma 1, and f, 3 comma negative 1. So here, let's find E. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
sorry, yeah, negative 4, and up 1. So this is our E. And then our next one is F, positive 3, up 1. So what I want to do is I want to find the distance between this. Oh, sorry. My apologies. It's negative 1. So it's 4, 3, down negative 1. Right? So I need to find the distance. My equation for the distance formula again. Oh. Square root Okay? So what we need to do here is all I need to do to make it easier is to make sure that I label. So before you start, let's just decide. It doesn't matter which one I choose to be the first point. Um, I can choose this one or this one. So let's label it. This is x1 and this is y1. So that means this has to be x2 and then y2. Once you label that, then it doesn't become too confusing. All I need to do is take these numbers and put it where they belong and then solve the equation. So the distance with the numbers filled my x2 is 3, my x1, x1 is negative 4, so minus a negative 4. Because there's a negative here, I'm going to put it in parentheses, squared, plus y2, which is negative 1, and I'm going to subtract it with y1, which is 1. Okay? Just in algebra, if you remember, a negative and a negative make a positive. So instead of 3 minus a negative 4, that basically means 3 plus 4. These combine together to become that, and I square. And then I do plus negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 minus a 1 would be a negative 2 squared. Now, don't forget order of operations. So first we're going to square them, and then we're going to add them. So 3 plus 4 is 7 squared plus negative 2 squared, so negative 2 times negative 2. When you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. So this would be a positive 4. Um, yes, positive 4. So 7 squared is 49, plus 4, which would give me square root of 53. Now, if this, let's say I have a square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5, it's a whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to square root that. But because the square root of 53 is not a whole number, you can go ahead and just leave it, square root of 53, and box it. And I'll accept that answer. Remember to write this down and solve. And then do page 25, number 2 and 4. There are two problems on this one. Number um, sorry, page 25, number 2 and 4. for the coordinates of the midpoint. So we're going into our second formula and it wants us to find the midpoint between G and H. Now we don't necessarily have to graph it out, we can just apply it to the midpoint. Now the midpoint formula, if you remember, is M equals X1 plus X2 over 2 gives us our new X, okay, and then y1 plus y2 over 2 gives us our new y. So, just like the other ones, let's just label to make it easier. And again, it doesn't matter which one we choose, we just got to choose one. I can choose this as x1, which means this has to be y1, and then these two are then x2 and y2. So all I need to do is plug it in and then solve. So x1 is negative 14, and x2 is 8 over 2. y1 is 12 and y2 is negative 6. So plus negative 6 over 2. Okay? 
So negative 14 plus 8 would be 6. Positive, sorry, negative 6. So negative 14, if I add 8, it would give me negative 6 over 2. And then 12 plus a negative 6, the 12 plus a negative 6 means basically 12 minus 6. Because a plus and a negative next to each other means that the negative wins out. So 12 minus 6 is 6 over 2, which then means that the middle of these two points is found at negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3, and 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So negative 3, positive 3. Go ahead and write this down. <clears throat> Our last problem is problem number three and it's asking what is the measure of PR if Q is the midpoint of PR. Now this is not necessarily we're using the formula of a midpoint, but basically the definition. And definition means that if something is the midpoint, we end up with two, what? Two equal parts, right? So two equal parts, this saying that if Q is the midpoint, so that means if Q bisects P are perfectly, that means what two lines are equal to each other? Line PQ, so I'm going to put this little line here to show me that it's equal, is equal to line QR. So what that basically tells me is that six, if this is 6 minus 3x, then this also has to be 6 minus 3x. Yes? And just like in the previous section, I know that this segment plus this segment equals the entire segment. So one more time, PQ plus QR equals the whole thing, which is PR. Now, with that stated, now we can just fill it in and then solve. So PQ is 6 minus 3x. Okay? QR, so I'm going to add, is 6 minus 3x. Right? And then it equals 14x plus 2. Now, in order to solve this, I have to combine like terms and then solve. So on this side, I'm going to combine like terms. I like to underline it to show that I've already done it. So if I want to combine this and this, I'm going to put 6x. These are also like terms. Sorry, negative 3x and negative 3. Don't forget the negative in front. So this would be a negative 6x. And this would be 6 and positive 6 would be plus 12 equals. And there's no like terms here, so I'm just going to bring it down. 14x plus 2. Okay? Then I'm going to add 6 x to both sides so that I can get all the x's on one side. So 14x plus 6x is 20x and I have to bring everything else down. So 2 and I have to bring down the 12. Now next I'm going to get rid of this 2 because the x can't, we can't finish off without isolating the x. So I'm going to subtract because opposite, subtract 2, I end up with 10 equals 20x. Okay, and then I need to divide both sides by 20x, which just gives me x equals 1 half. Okay, so the measure of it is 1 half. Here we have 10 equals 20x, and we end up with x equals 1 half. What the problem asks is us to find PR. So it's not asking us necessarily to find just x but we need to find PR. So don't forget to ask, because sometimes you assume that it is X, but you need to ask if um, yourself, what are they looking for? Because it's not always X. In order for us to find PR, we need to take X and plug it back into this equation, the whole thing PR. I can plug it into here if I want, and here, and add them together, but it's just easier to plug it into here. So we have 14, and then X, which is 1 half, plus 2. Okay, 14 divided by 2, that's what, 14 times 1 is 14, so I multiply it by the numerator and divide it by the denominator. 14 divided by 2 is 7 plus 2, so it gives us that PR equals 9. So my answer is PR equals 9. Alright, so make sure you write this down and you do number, page 24.